Hello, this is another one of our car boot finds and this is the Technics U90 which at the time when it came out, which was 1981, was their flagship organ and it had all clever things, they basically threw everything into this uh, and it, it was kind of sad seeing it there slowly getting destroyed by people. Uh, one of the buttons has been sort of broken off and yet it was perfect when I saw it earlier in the day. Uh, so yeah, we've got to sort that little problem out. Anyhow, we got it back, and uh, it's very very heavy. This is, uh, and it works. The the thing works. So what am I doing this video for? Well, the bass pedals don't work. Now the strange thing here with the bass pedals not working is if you plug in the headphones, they work. So that means there's a problem at the amplifier or after the amplifier. But I'll get to that in a bit. What I did, I opened it up and had a look inside and there's three capacitors in a row. And uh, they're super caps, they're 3.3 farads at 1.8 volts. And it's, it's, it's not a, a, a very important thing to the workings of the organ, but it is in a way that it uh, holds memory. So this has a kind of a, a program rhythm computer thing in it. And what those capacitors basically do is they hold a bit of a charge, so it can memorise what you've programmed into it. Uh, so when you switch it off and switch it on next week, the chances are that program is still there. But because the capacitors are leaking, I want to get them off the board anyway. So I've got to change those, but that's nothing to do with the bass pedals. But the uh, best thing is get them off and put a new one in there and replace it. But other than that, uh, yeah, it looks nice and reasonably tidy in there, apart from the usual stack of dust that's uh, sort of built up over the years. It's got a nice spring reverb in there as well, uh, and yeah, reasonably it's in good condition. Now when this came out in 1981, it was about four and a half thousand pounds, I think this started about four thousand and eventually became about four and a half thousand. Now in today's money that's seventeen thousand one hundred and twenty three pounds and ninety eight pence. So that's quite expensive. So it's worth fixing. Anyhow, I'll show you these capacitors and hopefully I'm going to get those changed and then I'm going to work on the, uh, the bass pedals and try and figure out what's wrong there. So let me just show you some of the things in here because I, I love this type of technology. This type of technology is repairable, uh, standard components mainly, so you know you can repair it. I've got to get to the bottom of this board here. Sorry the lighting's not very good but I don't normally work down in the hallway. So I've got to get to this board that's sitting on the bottom and there's all this stuff on the top of it. So uh, Something like this can be quite delicate. Uh, if, if I unscrew this and I start trying to lift this over, then you know I'm at risk of loosening something else or pulling too hard on another cable. There's so many cables going into this uh, motherboard that uh, I might have to start writing down all these numbers to make sure they all go in the same place. But maybe, uh, maybe I'm going to have to take this wooden piece off well, I am going to have to take that wooden piece off, but uh, to flip it over to get to where those capacitors are, maybe I'm going to have to actually unplug every one of these boards. I've mopped all the cables, yes. so hopefully they'll all go back in place. If not, it might end up as a, a dishwasher or something. So, <laughs> I was a dishwasher. <laughs> what I need to do is slide that over onto right. this because uh, if it drops down suddenly what it will do is it'll snap back onto these little posts because oh, right. these posts are designed to sort of catch. So if I get that board underneath there like so then I might be lucky and you ah. Get it onto here a little bit further. Do do? I don't need you to do anything at the moment. Oh, the brains. Like now, you've got to be nice and careful with this. Yeah. And you don't want those boards to wobble about too much. So I'm going to take this upstairs now onto a desk 
and get that capacitor sorted out. Look at that, it's not beautiful. Could probably do all that on one chip now. So this is the anti-static wrist strap, just in case I destroy anything. And you see, the way I got it out is I slid a chessboard underneath. And the reason for that is, I don't really want these boards wobbling around too much. I mean, the ideal way to do this would be to take every single board out. But putting them all back, pulling them out and putting them back again, all these different connectors on there, that's going to be a problem as well. Maybe. I don't know. So I just opted for getting the whole unit out like this. And the reason I put this on a chessboard is so that I can nice and gently, I hope, this might all go wrong. Just flip the whole thing up like that without too much stress on all those boards there. Now I can work on the capacitors under here. Ah, The capacitors, as I say, are leaking. Now these are 1.8 volts, 3.3 farads. But what I can actually do here is if you get the 3.3 farads and divide it by the three that's 1.1 farad but then you've got to go upwards in the voltage so you're going down in the farads and up in the voltage so 1.8 volts times three is 5.4 volts and 3.3 farads divided downwards is 1.1 so i managed to buy a 1.1 farad at 5.5 volts it's slightly over but uh what I'm going to do, I'm going to take those three out and just replace it with one, uh, and that should be fine. And what I'm also going to do here, just in case this happens again in the future, I'm not going to put the new capacitor on the board. Instead, I'm going to put a, a wire on the board so that I can somewhere at the back put the capacitor. So in the future, it'll be a lot easier. I won't have to take all this apart again. I'll just have to change the capacitor at that end. Uh, chances are it'll last a good 10 years before it needs doing again and it'll probably outlive me, who knows. So I'll just desolder these three capacitors here first. These are actually almost stuck down to the board. So, whoa, yuck. Where did that one go? Yep, yeah. that's the leaky one. But you've got to change all of them. It's no good just changing the one capacitor. There you go, all three off. All right, I'll just clean this bit of board up. Focus, please focus. Hello. Right, there you go. Look at that. Nasty. Now, did I take notice of which was the negative side? Because it's an electrolytic capacitor, so it has to go around the right way. Uh -uh. Right, okay, now I see which is the negative side. So I'm going to put that with the black line on there. Yes, I see daylight. So we'll warm it up a little. There we go. There you go. Now all I've got to do is put the capacitor on the end of this at the back of the organ so that in the future you can get to it and change it. And also if it starts to leak it's not going to leak onto the board as well. So if you can see here the negative is on the third capacitor on the negative side of it and the positive side is on the first capacitor the, uh, the positive side of it. And that should be enough cable to sort of run it around the side and if you remember there's a piece of wood that goes here so I can easily attach that to the piece of wood with the new capacitor on it. Trouble is, how do I mount it? Now, I buy a lot of components from RS Electronics. Uh, they're reasonably priced, but the best thing about them is, is very often you can buy the components one day and they're uh, delivered the next day. So I like to use RS components because they're so fast. Well, one farad, 5.5 volts. So what I want to do is get a piece of circuit board, something that's got a screw hole in it, like that, 
so I can screw that to the board and put the capacitor on there and of course this capacitor's got super thick legs on it ah. <laughs> okay I may have to make these holes a little bit bigger I've put this on a little bit of a board so that I could screw it to the wooden block and change it again in the future if needs be so ideally this should be 1.1 farad at 5.4 volts uh, and I've actually got a 1 farad at 5.5 volts I don't think it's close enough it, it should be okay so uh, make sure the capacitor's discharged before you actually solder it to the board I know it's new chances are there's no charge in it but just put a resistor across it for a moment just to make sure it's fully discharged now I'm going to solder this take it back downstairs and put it back in again I know it doesn't look very neat it would be nice if I just got the exact replacements and put them on the board but uh, I can't find the exact replacement capacitors for this now this is where you've got to make sure you've got it the right way around the black line is the negative and that's why I chose the black line on the wire as the negative so that way I shouldn't have any difficulties in putting it on the correct way round. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Like I say, that's only actually to hold the memory for your sort of custom rhythms and things like that. So I'll balance that on there. And I'll put this back and then I'll work on the pedals. Okay, I've put all the connectors in. I think, fingers crossed, and just got to put the wood on top. Uh, so this is what I've done basically, I've just put that piece of board here with the capacitor on there instead. So if in the future it needs changing, or if for some reason this doesn't work, then at least I can just change it here without having to pull out all of this again. I've got a bit of a feeling actually that because the bass pedals actually work through the headphones but don't work through the speaker system, Everything else works, but not the bass pedals. And what's missing here? The obvious. There's a speaker missing. Here's the wires for the speaker, but the speaker's actually missing. Now, I've followed this cable back to the actual amplifier, which is down here, and that's a separate channel. So I'm just kind of wondering, is that, is that the speaker just for the bass pedals? I'm not too sure. Uh, do you know, I'm going to actually just, I'm going to attach a speaker to this and check the bass pedals to see if they work. Because it might have been that somebody's had this repaired in the past, maybe they've blown one of the speakers, had the speaker taken away to find uh, an equivalent or something, and they didn't get around to putting it back. I know it sounds crazy, but, you know, I don't know. It's quite possible. So I'm just kind of wondering. I wonder if it's somehow that is just for the bass pedals although you'd think it would be this sort of big woofer type speaker that would be for the bass pedals because it works through the headphones like i say that'd be nice that'd be a nice easy fix unless there's a problem on the amplifier and that channel is actually uh, dead i don't know but there's no harm in trying it just seems a bit peculiar that these two wires are hanging about and there's no speaker and yet i've looked into this and didn't even see the obvious that there's a speaker missing. So let me spin this around and attach a, pe uh, a speaker to that. So all I've done now is just connected that speaker up to those two wires that were just flapping about in the breeze, as Dave on the EV blog would say. Uh, and it seems, because yes, we've already uh, had a little play and it, it kind of works. So the amplifier is okay, brilliant. Obviously what's happened is that speaker may have uh, ripped its cone or blown some other way and somebody's taken it out to repair it and it never got replaced again. So that's why the bass pedals aren't playing properly. So Jason, aka Organaut, I'll put his little link underneath there if you want to have a look at his videos on YouTube. Uh, is going to play us out with something that's not copyright and will just flow from his head and just give you a minute or so of what this beautiful machine sounds like. I'm so pleased we've saved it. 
I've just got to fix that one button there now, mm. uh, and then I'll start assembling it and look for a speaker to replace the one that came out of it. But other than that, great. This is another wonderful organ that uh, has not gone to the tip and won't be destroyed. So, Jason, take us away. Thank you very much. So if you enjoyed that video, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to check uh, Jason's YouTube channel, Organaut. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I think this is fixed, basically, apart from the speaker. I'll find one, don't worry. But other than that, yeah, thankfully, it's just the speaker that was the problem with the bass pedals. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Now then, here's a little uh, word of advice. Some of these techniques, things have a bit of a hum and buzz in the background when you're not actually playing it. Now it will mute out after a few seconds of playing nothing at all but there's still that hum there and one of the reasons for that is the earth. If you can uh, make more of an earth then you might get rid of the actual hum and the buzz. So I put some earth in a jar here okay nice brown earth and I extended the earth cable now that's the yellow and the green one so you've got to splay that out a little bit like that and then put it into the jar. And then you've given the organ a better earth. So the buzz has gone. Can you hear that? Oh. <laughs>